Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be going over an ETF that I believe is better than a market tracking ETF that tracks the S&P 500. And by tracking the S&P 500, I mean an ETF like the Vanguard 500 Index Fund ETF or the SPY ETF. Both of these ETFs track the S&P 500 as perfectly as it is, they weight everything by their market caps. But what if I were to tell you that there's an ETF that is probably better than both of these ETFs that still invests in the S&P 500 itself? And I think as investors, we're all looking for that ETF that does it all, especially if you're risk adverse. So if you want an ETF like that, definitely stick around for this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe for future content. Now, as far as ETFs go, I don't think that this ETF or ETFs like it are very spoken about at all. It's kind of unconventional. This is the Invesco S&P 500 Equal Weight ETF. The ticker symbol for that is RSP. So as the name suggests, it equally weights the stocks in the S&P 500 index. And the approach results in an exposure that tilts towards smaller companies and the S&P 500. And this, of course, will reduce concentration risk. Now, I think part of the problem when investing in the S&P 500 alone is that it is a very top-heavy index. There is a high amount of money or market cap concentrated in the top 10 largest companies. And not only that, but it is also concentrated in basically one sector. If you look at all of the holdings, I think it kind of speaks for itself that it is an extremely technology heavy index. And how everyone says that the S&P 500 is diversified, it's not really as diversified as everyone thinks with almost 30% of the holdings comprising the top 10 of this index. So the S&P 500, yeah, there's a lot of companies in it, but of course, there's not so much diversification when you actually look at the weightings of the index itself. Now, RSP, the equal weight S&P 500 ETF, still invests in all of the companies of the S&P 500, of course, because it does track the S&P 500 as an index, but the weighting is a bit different. And as you could see, all of the industries that it invests in here are relatively equal weight, especially in comparison with technology. Remember, about 30% of those top holdings were in technology. Now, with this RSP equal weight, it's only around 13%. So as you can see, this definitely offers probably quite a bit better diversification than an ETF that just tracks the S&P 500 like VOO or SPY. So if we do a quick review of these holdings, it is of course not exactly perfectly equal weighted, but it is as close as possible or as good as you can get about. And you'll see that all of these holdings are mostly in equal proportion compared to something like VOO or SPY. And of course, this gives you great diversification while still tracking the 500 largest companies in the US stock market, the S&P 500. So again, this portfolio is probably, in my opinion, for more so a risk adverse investor that wants to cover every single industry there is. Now, when it comes to past performance itself, this ETF does pretty well overall. And what you're going to find out later is that it definitely does compare to the regular S&P 500 in a certain way. Of course, there is a bit of tracking difference recently because of the run up in technology. Now, I think you'll be pretty surprised with this back test. So what I did was I invested $10,000. And I put the ticker that is going to be going up against SPY, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 as it is. So that is going to be how it is currently weighted. And then I put it up against RSP, the equal weight ETF. 
And of course, I reinvested the dividends to keep everything the same. And now this back test is going to be pretty long. So it's going to go from January 2004 to January 2024. So we have a nice long history to compare it to about 20 years there. And you are going to see that although the S&P 500 ETF, how it is currently weighted right now, did slightly outperform the equal weight ETF, you're going to see that overall, the majority of time, the equal weight ETF definitely outperformed the S&P 500 ETF more consistently. Like there are times where the equal weight ETF is absolutely outperforming the S&P 500 with the equal weight ETF being that blue line. So although the S&P 500 does sometimes outperform, I think it kind of goes to show that this equal weight ETF is nothing to shy away from. It's definitely performed better in some time periods. And again, this ETF offers better diversity than the S&P 500 because it is invested more so in every single kind of industry with not having that, that high proportion of that those top weighted holdings. So the ETF page, Invesco, puts out a really nice infographic here. So here is the S&P 500 index and then the equal weight index. And you'll see that 70% of the weighting is in the top 1 to 100 companies. So this huge portion here is all in that top 100. And then, of course, the equal weight is 20%, 20% all along. The S&P 500 equal weight index has outperformed the S&P 500 index based on rolling monthly periods over the past three, five, and 10 years. So again, more diversified, and it does seem based on this and the previous back test, the equal weight does perform better, at least historically. Now, I don't want this past performance to have you get the wrong idea because one, this may or may not continue. And two, the reason why I am suggesting this ETF over the S&P 500 is not because of performance. I am suggesting it to people that want better diversification and are a little bit possibly more risk adverse and want to shy away from sectors that may have gotten a lot of hype recently like technology and they don't want 30% of their money in stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, NVIDIA that saw this massive run-up. So that is really why I am suggesting for you to look at this ETF because I think that a more risk-adverse investor like me would want to maybe have an alternative versus a market weight ETF. So I think RSP would be pretty good for an investor that wants some diversification difference than a market weighted ETF or an index like the S&P 500. Again, I do own various different ETFs to basically shy away from a pure market diversification like the S&P 500, how it is weighted. I don't like that it is very top heavy. So I basically own several different ETFs for various reasons for, in, for income and growth. And what I see is that I do shy away from a pure weighted to the S&P 500. But honestly, if I were to only own one ETF, I would probably pick that market weighted ETF for that diversification. Anyway, I hope this video did give you some good information and provided you some alternative things to think about rather than just the S&P 500. If you did appreciate this content, definitely like the video and subscribe for future content, and I will see you all in the next video.